Right, hello guys and uh, welcome back to another part in my DIY analog synthesizer tutorial uh, basics video. Now what I'm going to tackle in this video is basically just just the kind of update to part 7 where we looked at the sine wave wave shaper and if we look at this schematic we refer to that one there first of all I'm going to not try to cover too much ground I've already covered so we would just basically look at the components we need we need basically four resistors 22k in although please don't take these um, values for complete absolute you can kind of get it built if it doesn't work you find you've got too much distortion your wave shape doesn't look right try and play around the values and then see you know see what works best for you this is personally what I've kind of got laid down on mine which is working for me at the moment um, you may have noticed from the last video I'm, I'm not 100% sure I think I said that I used uh, here I used two um, xenodiodes now somebody mentioned something in the comments so I thought hmm okay I'll go back to trying using um, shock key diodes so the shock, I'll try the shock key diodes and they work really nicely a lot better than the uh, normal 1N4148 silicon signal diodes which were recommended if we look at this here this is the original schematic where I took the um, where I took the basic circuit from and I've kind of put my own values in there so if we have a look at that again I mean to be honest with you where this this dot this um, R2 resistor is it doesn't matter which side of these diodes that goes as long as it's linked to the non-inverted node of your operational amplifier and let's quickly remind ourselves of the operational amplifier we have non-inverting sorry non-inverting input inverting input and what I hadn't included on the last um, schematic which I showed was the pull I think they refer to this as a pull down resistor I'm not 100% sure so we need to add one of these in here which goes to ground and this value here can be anything but I used I used the 1.5k here for R3 to earth in this feedback loop here you can use 100k you could go up even further it kind of all depends on how your shape is looking you can either try and re increase the value like I said make sure you got yourself a nice bundle of different value resistors before you sort of uh, go to town with this and go oh that was bollocks that didn't work because well yeah like I said it's one of these things what work will work for some someone for one person may not work for you it's all kind of very much dependent on you know input voltages and current etc etc um, so yeah so what we need first of all is, is the first main ingredient is a nice symmetrical triangle wave shape bring that into the um, into the resistor and observe the polarity of the capacitor we have these connected straight to earth and here we have these all, all these here straight to earth or zero volts and we have this resistor here in the feedback loop now if I can turn the, if we have a look on this scope here and if I turn this on and I'm just going to trigger we can see that's the that's the sine wave wave shape there and it's a, just a tiny bit kind of skewed but it gives us a nice um, a nice hollow sound with very hot, well no, no harmonics apart from the fundamental at all in there now there is another little, small component which I didn't um, I forgot to mention last time if we look here we see this little yellow guy over over here this is where our sine wave wave shaper is it's a capacitor now if we refer back to the schematic we will put this um, capacitor in as our C2 Sorry about the reflection of the light. And what we'll do is we'll put that C2 up here. Now if I can, I will just try to pull out the one I have in my circuit and just check the value of it. Again, you don't necessarily have to go exactly by what I have. But we just want to kind of have a see what range that is in. There it comes. Now, what I have here is 
a 562, which I think, mm, not 100% sure, 562, but that's quite a low value resistor. I think we're looking in kind of, I think it may be about 5.6 nanofarads or 56, 56,000 picofarads. Could be more, could be another zero on the end. You'd have to check with a capacitor calculator. But basically, you want something, say a 102, 10, you could even go up to 103. See how the shape of your um, your sine wave looks. Now, if I just go up to the scope and I put the, I've just removed that capacitor, and if I turn it on, and if we look at, can we see the shape of that? Can we see how distorted that looks now? We will get lots of sort of harmonics in that. We don't want that as a sine wave. We want a nice, pure sounding, single, fundamental sound, or wave shape, should I say, sound. And I'm just going to try and put my mini brute onto a hold and then show you what happens when we put the capacitor back into that feedback loop. I'm trying to do this all one handed here. So please uh, be patient with my multitasking skills. And I see that. So we pop that pop that capacitor in there and we see how it's rounded it's rounded off the edges here. It's taken at a nice sort of it's rounded off that distortion. Now if we look at this, if we think about the shape of the the um sine wave, it's kind of associated with the shape of a triangle wave if you think about the actual overall shape of it. We've, it's almost like a hill. We've got a straight hill, but this we get the raw rounded hill. And what's very important here is we have nice uh, triangle wave symmetry to begin with. Now, there's a couple of... I'm just going to take that off of VCO3. I'm going to go into VCO1 and this is our triangle wave. Now, it's very important that we try and get nice symmetry on the triangle wave and I have put in another addition as an experiment so it just popped into my head because I was having very a lot of trouble trying to get the triangle wave to be symmetrically nice and have a good shape so what we have here is a trimmer let's find it over here which is basically it goes to the plus rail and the minus rail and we still have our other trimmer in from the triangle wave. Now if I adjust, that's going to be that first trimmer that I've just been talking about is the voltage offset. Now if we see if we do that with the offset trimmer, you see how we can we can actually bend that out. So it kind of goes back to its original input waveform which is the saw. And if we take that there, so we'll get that a nice sort of, a nice Show. We've got two trimmers to play with here. We've got the voltage offset trimmer and then we've also got the actual shape there. So we can see that looking that's leaning a little bit to the right. So I just want to bring that so that's about there. And then I'm going to play with the volt the uh, the offset trimmer and get that symmetry looking nicer so we get a nice hollow bleeping triangle. So there we go, and what I will do is I'll show you very quickly in my next video this on the schematic how we put that um, where we we put the the offset trimmer in. Anyway, thank you for watching, people. Uh, if you've got any questions or you can think of ways we can I can actually improve this circuit or any uh, advice or you think I should probably give to people, you want to give other people advice, get in contact, subscribe, leave a comment, give me a thumbs up if you like it. If you don't give me a dislike anyway uh, catch you soon people I will be back soon shortly to try and possibly cover um, the filters how we can build the two filters I'm currently using alright catch you soon